Thanks for reaching out to El Futuro to learn more about how we nurture stronger familias to live out their dreams. If after watching this presentation, you still have more questions, my contact information is on one of the slides and I'll be happy to answer them when you reach out to me. El Futuro came into being because the Latinx population in North Carolina between 1990 and 2010 grew really rapidly. This growth in population was partly an influx of immigrants, but also an increase in the number of Latinx citizens born here in the US who chose North Carolina for their home. This population did not have good access to mental health and substance use treatment, partly because they had less health insurance but also because only one in 11 Latinos with a mental health diagnosis sought out mental health services. And for immigrants, this was even worse. Only one in 20 immigrants with a mental health need sought care. Latinos were also more likely to drop out from care prematurely. A volunteer organization started in 2001. In 2004, El Futuro Incorporated. In 2005, the first clinic opened in Carborough. That clinic's no longer open. In 2006, the Siler City Clinic opened, and in 2009, the Durham Clinic opened. We moved to our new Durham location in 2018. From being completely volunteer organization, we now have around 50 staff. The founding board president was Maria Lapetina. The founding staff included volunteer executive director and psychiatrist Luke Smith, who continues to be our executive director, and program director and therapist Karen Current. The trajectory of growth has been like a rocket. Those 50 staff include bilingual, bicultural social workers, psychologists, psychiatrists, therapists, and case managers who provide culturally responsive and linguistically accessible mental health care and substance abuse treatment. Last year, 1,500 to 1,700 Latinos got served with 13,500 visits. This is growth over the year before. We provided services primarily in our Siler City and Durham Clinic, but also school-based services and telehealth, video therapy for people who live in rural areas. Why we do this is because we want to nurture stronger familias to live out their dreams. And how we do it is focused with igualdad, equidad, making sure that we're bringing equity into our work, confianza, building trust with people so that they feel comfortable working with us and sharing their stories, but also so they'll recommend our services to other people. Conocer a las personas donde ellos están, meeting people where they're at, helping them feel like we're not coming in to judge them or tell them what to do, but really to understand what's going on for them and help them move toward their goals. Calor humano, really being warm and caring de la gente, muy pueblo, not coming in as experts judging people and telling them here's how to do things, but coming alongside them. And respecto a la cultura, understanding not just the individuals, but understanding the culture that they live in and behaving in a culturally responsive manner, and also knowing that we can't know everything, having cultural humility. We do this work with each other, and so the staff commit to each other to be honest, authentic, kind, respectful, cooperate one with each other, and really focus on being present so that we can work together. There are a bunch of videos about El Futuro that you can see on our website, including information about our community mural. We have two audacious goals for the next 10 years. The first is to continue to increase the mental health and substance use treatment services available to underserved Latinos in North Carolina. But the other is to become a national model and resource center for Latinx mental health and substance use treatment. We do things directly for clients, for families who need substance abuse and mental health treatment, things for the community overall, and then things to help build the capacity of mental health providers so that there's more culturally 
responsive service available across the whole state. For families, we provide therapy, specialists in substance use and alcohol treatment, psychiatry, and that therapy can be for individuals, for families, or for groups. For the community, we've got a therapeutic green space in addition to opportunities to get connected to the community, decreasing social isolation, and that's through workshops as well as celebrations. We're providing that to the community as a whole to try and destigmatize mental health services, but also to build awareness of the needs for mental health support for Latinx people. For mental health providers, we have collaborative research projects where people can learn more and gather more information to continue to build the base that we are shared understanding of mental health. We are sharing that knowledge about past practices with each other, providing case consultation when people need it to help them better understand their Latinx clients. We have learning cohorts over periods of months to really build up people's skills in providing culturally responsive care. And we provide technical assistance and consultation to make sure agencies aren't just looking at professional development needs of their staff, but also how could they reframe their policies, their procedures, their facilities to make things more accessible to Latinx people. When we see people for therapy or substance abuse treatment, the most common diagnosis is depression or trauma and stress related disorders. We also see a significant number of people with substance use issues. 60% of the people seen in the clinics are adults and 40% are children over the age of six. So those services we provide really wrap around the people who come to get them. They can get individual therapy, group therapy, family therapy. They can also get psychiatry or substance use treatment when they need it. And for people whose lives are being affected by the social determinants of health, we can offer case management to help them better connect to other resources their families need. When I say therapy groups, there are all different kinds of groups we offer. Lo Grande La Calma is a mindfulness-based stress reduction group, Lazos Fuertes for parents of teens, Mente Sana using the techniques of dialectical behavioral therapy to help people with managing their moods, Movimientes Conscientes, managing stress through trauma-sensitive yoga, El Faro for parents of children with ADHD, Mente Avanzada for clients who want to expand on the practices they learned in Mente Sana, and other groups as they're appropriate to the needs we see in our clients. Most groups are six weeks long and clients are able to re-enroll and continue if they continue to see the benefit from participating. Why groups? Because there's a special benefit that comes from connecting with other people that helps us continue to heal even after the therapy is finished. El Futuro services for substance abuse are for people mandated because they've had a driving while intoxicated charge, but also for people who self-identify as wanting to get better control over their drinking or their substance use. In addition to these services that are in our clinics, we have services in our therapeutic green space. It's a great place for people to come connect, some place that's beautiful, safe, relaxing. It's open to our clients, our staff, our neighbors. It's a place where people can create lasting memories with their children, but also a place where adults can be transported back to the happy memories of their childhood. Another program outside of the clinic is Telefuturo. Telefuturo works with three sites to provide teletherapy and telepsychiatry to Latinx folks in rural counties. Episcopal Farm Worker Ministry, Good Samaritan Clinic, and North Carolina Farm Workers Project are our three partners. In terms of developing the skills of professionals so that we can expand our capacity to serve Latinx people across the state, we have La Mesita Network. The network is a place where people can share ideas and connect with each other and then learn from each other. There are webinars on specific topics that happen weekly. 
There's group learning over a period of months in the learning cohort. There's case consultation on specific topics where somebody gets the opportunity to present a case after hearing didactic information shared about how to best address that kind of situation, and then can get input from a panel of people about ideas for moving forward. Every other year, there's a conference on Latinx mental health. And then there's also the ability to get technical assistance and consultation to do a deeper dive into looking at the agency overall and things it might wanna change in terms of policies, procedures, facilities, in addition to the professional development needs of their staff. When new patients come to the clinic, they start through the walk-in process. So you can refer yourself or somebody else can refer you, but to get an appointment quickly, we have people walk in and get an assessment and then get assigned to a clinician. If you have questions about making a referral or the walk-in process, you can call 919-688-7101. All of this work is funded by grants and contracts. That's the main source of funding together with fees for services, so when we are able to bill Medicare, Medicaid, or somebody pays for their services, and then individual and corporate contributions. That money is all spent on clinical services. 64% is spent on services in the Siler City and Durham clinics. 19% is spent on services outside the clinic, like the therapeutic green space and Telefuturo. And then 17% of the funds go to support La Mesita, growing the network of providers. Currently, 1,000 providers are involved in La Mesita. So what can you do? Well, the first thing you can do is engage with El Futuro. Subscribe to the newsletter, join La Mesita's network if you're a provider, follow us on social media. The second thing you can do is volunteer. If you want to get your hands dirty, Come to the green space. You can dig, build, install features, paint, weed. If getting your hands dirty isn't your kind of volunteering, you could join our outreach team, helping represent El Futuro at fairs and festivals. If you're more of an office-based kind of volunteer, we could use your help with copying, filing, faxing. If you have other talents you wanna share, we use volunteers to take photographs, write blogs, help design newsletters, if you have a talent, we'd love to make use of it. If you're part of a group, whether it's a faith community group, a fraternity, sorority club, we could use you as a group coming to volunteer, especially in our green space. The third way you can support us is by contributing. You could make a donation. If you shop on Amazon, you could sign up for Amazon Smile and pick El Futuro as your beneficiary. And then every time you shop, we're getting some of the money or you could ask a business that you go to to support El Futuro. A restaurant could be asked to give a gift card for an event, or your dentist, your insurance agent could be asked to sponsor El Futuro. If you still have questions about El Futuro that weren't answered by this brief presentation, you can reach out to me directly and I'd be happy to answer your questions as best I can or connect you with the person who can. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn about our work and how we nurture stronger familias to live out their dreams. We really appreciate it. Mil gracias.